Hello everyone, hope you're doing well so far and um, hope you're also able to catch on uh, in your classes, uh, whether it's online or on your own, all right, on uh, business studies. Um, what we're going to do today is still on motivation, all right, specifically the last two theories, okay, and we are in the chapter of um, motivation. Okay, now it's important for us to always do a bit of a recap and understand what motivation is. So you know that motivation are the reasons or factors that pushes people to do certain things, to achieve certain things in life, all right? Now, why we're learning about theories is because these individuals or researchers who have spent time understanding the reason behind people doing things will help us understand what those factors are. Okay, and it will help us to motivate ourselves and uh, as well as answering our exam questions. Okay, now this is a page where we look at all of the researchers we have. Taylor, Mayo, Maslow, Herzberg, McClellan and Vroom. Right, out of these six individuals, we have covered Taylor and Mayo in part one. And then we have Maslow and Herzberg in part two and three. And today, in part four, we will talk about McClellan and Vroom. Okay, now let's talk about David McClellan and his uh, human motivation theory. Or in some books, in most cases, you would also hear the theory of needs, right? Which means the same thing. Now, McClellan says that we all have three motivators or three needs that, you know, we aim to fulfill. And it may not mean that we will all be falling in the same three category. Uh, These needs are shaped by our experiences in life, right? And how the job is. And therefore, it somewhat uh, modifies the way uh, we are motivated, okay? Now, the needs are for achievement, for authority, and for affiliation, right? For achievement here means that we look at things to achieve things, to accomplish something, all right? Setting higher targets is something that makes us happy, pushes us to the brink, all right? When we, are, when we have new challenging tasks to do and when we are able to achieve it, that makes us motivated, all right? He also says that we have a need for power, right? Some of us or most of us may have this need where we need to win an argument. We need to show our authority. We need to show that dominance in conversations. All right. That means that need for power and authority. Right. And some of us have that need for affiliation. Affiliation here refers to feeling belonged, having groups where we can associate ourselves with. We would want to share with people and listen for, uh, to them. All right. At the same time, we may agree with everybody else so that we do not feel left out, right? So affiliation is to feel belonged, to feel connected, okay? So now um, you see descriptions of each of those needs on the screen, but they're not matched to the right description. So your job right now, I'm going to leave you some time, that is, to match the right description to the right need. And we'll talk again in the next slide. Okay, now let's look at the answers. For need for achievement, all right, people who are in this category or who feel that there is a need to achieve, desire to achieve realistic yet challenging goals, they take calculated risk, right, to ensure that they do not fail, all right, 
They need feedback on progress and sense of accomplishment. Why do they need feedback? So that they know that they're on the right track, right? And that helps them to push themselves further, right? Most of the time, a person who has a need for achievement prefer to work alone because they feel more confident on themselves achieving certain tasks rather than depending on other people, right? To help them uh, get things done or achieve something or to win something, okay? Right? This can cause pressure and demotivation to others, especially in working in groups where you are a person who needs to achieve and, and the rest feels that it may be hard for them to, you know, come up to your pace, right? And this can demotivate them, right, in your um, quest to achieve, uh, you know, something. Now, for the need for power and authority, okay, this is the answer. Dominant need to take control and influence others. This person normally have a very strong sense of leadership, wants to take control, wants to lead, wants to influence others, enjoy status, recognition, winning arguments and competition, right? Basically, being, on tr uh, being in control, having that ability to uh, have his or her say over others, right? And winning arguments and competitions, is something that they really, really look forward to, all right? So there are people who look at power and authority as a great need, okay? And there are a few of us who looks at the need for affiliation, all right? What, what do we mean by this? We have this desire for friendly relationships and interaction with others, right? We favor collaboration over competition. So if there's anything to do with projects where we have to work together and come up with a certain, you know, objective or outcome, uh, this person really thrives on that, right? They want to feel belonged to a group. They want to be liked. They want to be accepted, right? And most of the time, they may be accepting people's views um, without much argument or, or trying to butt in with their points, okay? Because they want to feel accepted. And sometimes this can hinder effective decision making, especially when there are difficult decisions to be made because people in this category will find it hard to make a decision. They're more of a pleaser rather than saying something of their own, all right, because of fear of how others may look at them, all right, that's how they think, all right, so these are the three needs according to McClellan and their description, I hope you're able to get it right, if not, don't worry, you can always rewind on this video and try it again. Okay, now let's look at Victor Vroom, okay, who talks about his expectancy theory. Vroom basically says that the strength of our motivation to do something is based on three expectations, okay? But before we look specifically at the three expectations, let me explain to you what he really means, okay? He says that as a human being, we will put effort into doing something, all right, that will relate to a great performance, okay? because we want to have a certain reward, all right? And if that reward is satisfying a particular need, then that effort that we put would make it worthwhile, okay? So in other words, what he's trying to say is that as human beings, we will put our effort into doing something if there is something in return, and that something in return has um, is really meaningful that we'll go all out to get it done. To achieve it. So the three expectations he was mentioning about is valence, expectancy and instrumentality. All right, let's look at them one by one. Valence here means is the depth of want, all right, because you want to receive something. How much of a want do you have to achieve this, to do this in order to get something in return? How, how great of a need do you have to get that something in return? Okay, and if we have a high depth of uh, want, all right, then we would we also need to believe that the effort that the effort will drive performance and the performance will bring rewards. Okay, in other words, if there is a deep want of something to achieve something to get something in return, it's also important for the individual to ensure that the effort he or she is putting into the job will give him or her that reward. Okay, and of course, instrumentality, the confidence that the employee will receive the rewards they want. 
Okay, so in doing a particular task depends on the individual's depth of want, how much they need something, how much they believe that in performing an, uh, you know, uh, th uh, that particular job that they will get the rewards and of course that confidence that they will receive the rewards that they want. Okay, so in applying Room's expectancy theory in the workplace, managers who, you know, wants to motivate employees and on, uh, specifically on employees who feel that they can only do something if there's something in return, right? This is a really hard uh, process to pull because employers need to ensure that they are constantly motivating employees in the right way where there is a recognition given. Okay, and that recognition needs to be great enough to attract them to do more. Okay, and fulfilling that recognition, not merely promises, but something that you give your employees in return for the effort that they put is very, very crucial. Okay, so therefore, he says, uh, what Room says is that the strength of our motivation, right? That means how much uh, will we push ourselves to do something depends on what we want, right? How much we want something in return upon doing it, right? How much we believe we will get it, right? And how, how confident we are that we will receive it from our bosses, okay? So that is the theory of room. Okay, so this shows that we have come to a slide where we're going to summarize what we have learned or able to take away. Okay, I hope you are able to, you know, understand and able to explain the works of McClellan and Vroom. Okay, what they have done and uh, what are the main ideas from these theories that you can take away as well. Okay, so um, the ch this two chapters or these two uh, theories that we've covered today is the closing of all of the theories, six uh, researchers and their works, okay? Uh, broken down into various parts, part one, part two, part three, and part four. They're all on my playlist of uh, motivation, okay? Uh, the chapter of motivation is not concluded yet, okay? Uh, we will be looking at the financial and non-financial motivators in the next video. But I encourage all of you to refer to those videos uh, already prepared, uh, as well as to read your notes um, from class, textbooks, having your online lectures and whatnot, ensure that you really understand how to apply these theories in the workplace, okay, uh, in today's business world, uh, because that is important besides just understanding what the theories do, but not being able to apply, okay? That's it for today's lesson. I hope you're able to pick up a thing or two. You have questions to ask me, don't worry. My email address is on the slide here, teach at savage.com.my. Right? Please do like this video if you find it useful. Uh, do share it around and do subscribe to find out more on what's coming up next. Thank you so much and have a pleasant day ahead.